program BTEC admission fair 2022. We Directorate of Admissions and Academic Outreach proudly presents you before you the Grand BTEC Admission Fair 2022. This fair is a six-day series that will equip higher secondary students with all the information about Amrita Vishen Vida. We will clarify each student's career-related queries and doubts. Today, we will discuss about extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities. Apart from academics, extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities plays an important role in students' life. This will help the students to grow mentally and physically, and also help them to develop their problem-solving skills, creativity, collaboration, and reasoning. So these extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities should be included in the curriculum of the institution. Today, we will get to know more about this topic from our esteemed guest of honor, Dr. Sriram Devanathan, Sriram Devanathan, who currently serves as the principal of Amrita School of Engineering, Bangalore. And he's also as a prof he's also serves as a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Sciences at Amrita Vishwavidya Peetam, Bangalore. He has more than ten years of industrial experience at the 3M company in Texas and California, and has seven years of experience in academic research as a graduate at Iowa State University, USA. His areas of interest include low-cost materials, waste to energy technologies, process intensification, Six Sigma, and so on. He has significant expertise in CG, MP, and internal auditing. So, Sri Ram, sir, a very good evening. Now, the stage is yours. All the students are eagerly waiting to know more about this topic from you, sir. Thank you so much, Parvati. Om Namashaya, warm welcome to all the participants. To start with, I always have this favorite quote from Mark Twain, who said, I have never let schooling interfere with my education. Now, what does this mean? I have never let schooling interfere with my education. There are certain things that are associated with school. When I say school, it includes even college higher education institutions, when you are there sitting in the classroom, you are learning certain things. But that's not the only place you can learn, nor is what is taught there the only things you can learn. There are so many things you can learn outside, all the time, all the time, anywhere, whether it's at home or while you're with friends outside, while you're playing, while you're giving a speech, anytime. How does this happen? So personally for me, this has been something that I've never compromised in my own life. I remember even as a child, even in the Hyderabad severe summer, when it was 45 degrees centigrade outside, my mother was never worried. She knew that every day after school, I would just change from my uniform and just go off I'd disappear from uh, home. And when neighbors asked what happened, where is your boy, where is your child and all that, she said, oh, when he's hungry, he'll come back. And uh, what I was doing all that time, I was outside playing. Now, why was this so important? There are so many skills, attributes, personality, traits that you cannot acquire simply sitting in a classroom. Doesn't matter even if the teacher is the greatest teacher in the earth. It doesn't matter. You will have to do all these. So when I go outside and I play and I argue and debate with all my friends and uh, rough and tumble football game and all that, every day almost I used to get some bruises and cuts and scrapes on my knees. And my mother was not worried. She said, oh yeah, he knows there are some of these little, little plants. He will crush those leaves and he'll apply it on his knees where it bleeds. He get used to it. See, there is this mentality that all these experiences toughen you. Just as we do exercises, physical exercises to build the muscle strength. These are all the exercises that life gives us to build the inner strength and resilience. You cannot get that sitting inside a classroom. What happens when we go from a certain age and stage in life, the primary school years to middle school to high school and so on, it is uh, something quite sad that we see, that we've been seeing in the last couple of decades at least. Many children lose their childhood. Now, what do I mean by that? 
you see all these coaching centers that are there. They are breeding uh, people to write the exams, the entrance exams for engineering. Literally, it seems like five years, six years of the child's life is sacrificed because from morning five o'clock till night, eight o'clock or nine o'clock, they are there completely buried in, in the coaching center. They're doing their plus two and they're, or they may be doing their high school and they're just busy, busy, busy preparing for that one shot of the engineering entrance exam or the IIT. It's very sad. In my opinion, that should not be done. I'm being very blunt and open here. What should be done then? There cannot be any compromise when it comes to physical activity. There cannot be any compromise when it comes to reading comprehension. Now, when I say reading comprehension, it means you have to read lots of books, lots of story books. I'm not talking about newspapers or biographies or something, lots of novels. That's the best way in which you can pick up reading comprehension. Without reading comprehension, you may go to a certain stage and then you'll get stuck. You'll be stagnant in life. And there's something very magical that happens when you have the when you have developed the habit of reading. Because you see, when you watch a movie, you are watching somebody else's imagination. When you read a book, you are applying your own imagination. And there's a tremendous difference between the two. When you read a book, you start developing greater and greater powers of your imagination. And that brings, in turn, it brings creativity. That creativity with the reading comprehension is going to make you innovative. It's going to make you successful. Whichever stream of uh, knowledge you take up, whichever field of knowledge you take up. Okay, so now we have talked about these two things. Primarily, you know, when you talk about reading comprehension and uh, when you think about uh, uh, you know, the things that are done indoors, let's say. But what about outdoors? Again, when I was in school, I was like I said, I was literally outside playing all the time. I never compromised on that. In college, again, I was in the college volleyball team and football team, cricket team. What does all this do to us? Well, apart from the very obvious thing that it's going to keep you physically healthy, there's something other, there are some other things that are very, very beautiful that uh, go unnoticed sometimes. One, you have to be in situations where you have certain kinds of conflicts because this is reality. In sports, in games, especially, especially team sports, just think of this. You are spending, uh, let us say cricket or volleyball or football, you always have an opponent team. So an entire group of people is against you. Their job is to defeat you. But we have so much fun. right? We have so much fun. But just think of this. If we can learn this to apply in real life, that when the world seems to be against you, you can still practice those things that you have learned as a, as a child in sports. And you can still enjoy life. Now, it doesn't mean that somebody is coming at you with a knife and, and, and stuff that you're going to enjoy it. It's not like that. But I'm just saying most of the time in, in life, thankfully, most of the time, we are not facing people with knives and guns and all that. Our average person, okay, unless you are going into a war. But for all of us, we have face opposition, whether it is in a company or in a college, wherever it is, we are facing opposition. Now, can we take up that spirit that we had as a child where we said we had so much fun. We had opposition, but we had so much fun. So that spirit, I think we can learn a lot if we think back to the early childhood. But if a child is deprived of those valuable moments where they indulged in sports, in team activities, that is very sad because later on they face problems because of that. Now coming to higher education. Here is a situation where the colleges have excellent facilities. They will have wonderful playgrounds. They'll have badminton courts, volleyball courts. Even if you want indoors, you can have table tennis. You'll have, uh, you can have carrom board. All these are there. The facilities are there. But if we don't use it, if we just sit there and get addicted to the Korean drama series and get addicted to all the movies and all these series that are out there, then we have stunted our own growth. We have limited our own growth. We spend all the time on the mobile. We have stunted our own growth. 
So somewhere a uh, wake up call is needed and colleges provide this wake up call. They do it in many ways. One, if we see somebody out there on the playing fields, they're having fun, they're shouting, they're having a gala time. Naturally, you'll feel motivated. If somebody's having fun, you also want to have fun. Second thing is we have all these student clubs and there will be technical clubs, there will be cultural clubs, sports clubs, all these kinds of clubs. Now in a campus of this size here, we are about 45, 50 acres in this Bangalore campus. Here we have 2,800 students and we have 45 clubs. And we have Coimbatore campus, which is maybe about double the size, more than double the size of uh, Bangalore in terms of number of students. 10 times larger in terms of the land area. There they have about 100 clubs, maybe 90 clubs. Now what happens with all these students? You have 5,000, 6,000 students, 3,000 students who are in campus. How many of them are actually taking active participation in all of these clubs? That makes all the difference. Here is where we have to create a wonderful ecosystem where we say, my dear brothers, sisters, my dear students, all these facilities are there for you. I want you to have fun. Now, through these, what happens? You learn the teamwork, how to get along with people. You learn leadership skills. You learn organization skills. You learn time management. You learn communication. All these things which you could not necessarily get inside the classroom. All this is happening all the time. Even the two years of pandemic did not put any damper on our activities. Not, in, not the least bit. The entire two years, everything was seamlessly continued online. Nothing was sacrificed. Well, except for maybe the sports activities where you couldn't actually physically be here. But even those kids, I'm proud of them. They said, we will take up training of people in, in terms of how to have a healthy lifestyle. What exercises can you do at home? Uh, can we teach them yoga? Can we teach them about diet and nutrition? Kudos to them, right? They rose to the occasion, they rose to the challenges. So now you see, even the pandemic during that time, whatever challenges were there, they rose to it and they developed their own skills and inner abilities. They developed resilience here. So this is what we are really, really, really looking for when we say that extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities in the higher education institutions add tremendously I'll make a very simple statement, but a very, very strong statement here. If I take this reading comprehension that I told you about, now I'm, I want to tell the audience, I'm sitting here as a principal of an engineering college, I'm making this bold statement. Reading comprehension is 50 times more important than CGP. Okay. I'm making this dramatic statement. Reading comprehension is 50 times more important than CGP. CGPA may be able to get you uh, some interviews and it's for short term. If you do not have good reading comprehension, you're going to be stunted for life. Somewhere or the other, it'll take a hit. You'll, you'll come to a wall. So my dear young friends, take that as a challenge today that you're going to start reading and reading and reading. Not biographies, not self-help books and all that. That's all fine. You can do that. But in order to get to a certain stage of reading comprehension, certain level of skill, you must read novels. And that's very important. And slowly you'll find, you'll develop such a love for it that you won't have to have any, anybody tell you to go and read. You'll just get so addicted to it. I can promise you. Now, along with this, this reading comprehension and the meaning construction that you will learn. See, in LKG and UKG, we are taught in a certain way, A for apple, B for bat, C for cat, D for dog. What are we doing? We are associating some letter or a sound with some object, a picture that we have in our mind. Now, even a chimpanzee can do that. There are chimpanzees that have been trained to do that. Now, what we learned in LKG, suppose we go through our entire life using this method of just associating some letter or a sound with some object, a picture. Really, can we just say that we are better than chimpanzees? No. So this is where reading comprehension makes a huge difference. Once we develop that, we come to a very important skill. It's called critical thinking. 
today the world recognizes how important that is. But if we are still in that LKG mode, the chimpanzee mode of A for apple, B for bat, where is the critical thinking? It will not come. So we have to start with reading comprehension, read lots of books, develop the ability to construct meanings on your own. Then we can make a progress through critical thinking. Now, critical thinking is something that can be developed experientially. And that is where all these extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities come in. So you develop that solid base of communication with reading comprehension. Then you start participating in all these extra co-curricular activities. And you'll find it's an amazing journey in picking up, picking up the critical thinking skills. You have these two things, reading comprehension, critical thinking, and then you bring in the things that you learn from extracurricular activities, your love for the outdoors. Which company in the world will not hire you? They'll all be knocking at your doors. Which company will not hire? So all the time that I was there as a graduate student, as a postgraduate student, PhD student in the US, I just made it a point to just experience everything. I have a second degree brown belt in Taekwondo, one step below black belt. I used to do ice skating, cross country skiing, downhill skiing, kayaking, canoeing, sailing, white water rafting, tubing. I've even jumped out of a plane from 9,000 feet in the air. I've done bungee jumping, all these. So I've never sacrificed though in terms of my academics. Today with all these and having five degrees, to my name. I can get a job anywhere in the world. So extracurricular activities, activities were responsible for this kind of a solid, solid foundation where somebody speaks and says, anytime I want to go anywhere in the world, I can go. To have that kind of confidence would be great, isn't it? So for that, you need that base, you need that foundation. No compromise on either side not on the academics, not on the extracurricular or co-curricular activities. Amrita is very proud to host such an ecosystem, a healthy ecosystem, where all these facilities are given because our chancellor believes in that, the holistic education. Our chancellor believes that, they've created that. So the support is there in terms of the physical infrastructure, in terms of the equipment, in terms of the encouragement given to do all of these, in terms of having the systems and mechanisms to nourish. And of course, our alumni, they are beautiful. God bless them because they support us as well when they go out into the world and experience success. They come back and they want to give back to current students. So with this infrastructure, we've been very fortunate. And uh, I'm sure that those of you who are lucky enough to join the Amrita group of institutions will get to taste this in person and have a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are, but I hope it was uh, enough of a stimulating um, monologue. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you, sir, for sharing these valuable insights with us uh, regarding the importance of extracurricular activities with our participants. Sir. So again, I'm thanking you for sharing your valuable time with us, sir. So students, uh, now uh, next we can move to uh, our, uh, our next session. So we are having Mr. Sudhir K, who is the head career counselor at Directorate of Admissions and Academic Outreach. He will share you all the and electronic engineering and mechanical engineering so students before getting in the session if you have any queries you can just type it in our chat box we will discuss it at the end of the session so i so i am welcome mr sudhir to deliver the session over to you Thank you, thank you, Parvati, for that introduction, and thank you, sir, uh, Sajam, sir. Actually, uh, uh, listening to the things which you have done, actually, I feel uh, shy about myself because I've done almost every activity that is possible for a, a teenager uh, to go through. I think those are adventurous activities where a lot of skills can be developed through this. I think uh, it's one of the important thing today's students should understand. Life is not only about academics because not everything can be learned from the textbooks. 
because I, even when the sir said uh, playing these sports and participating in this extracurricular and co-curricular activities today, you can work together as a team. You know, that is the best skill which requires for you. Being a diverse country like India, you don't know which city you'll be doing the job or which country you'll be working on. And these kind of adapting adaptability skills also will be coming because you will be getting to know how to gel together as a team, how to work towards a common goal. This is very much important students participating in extracurricular activities and Amrita supports you once you enter here with all the required infrastructure with the required opportunities for you and you should be lucky enough to participate in this i don't know how many of you have visited our campuses our campuses are so beautiful and serene and you can come and visit our campus also and uh, thank you sir for sharing this insight because it's very much important in every student life today okay after this then i will be sharing your brief insights about electrical and electronics engineering and mechanical engineering. I know a lot of you might be wondering, I think yesterday, I don't know how many people uh, are part of yesterday's session. I have discussed about automation and robotics and aerospace engineering. Now today I will be giving you a brief about the two engineering branches which we are, which are in front of us. I don't know. I don't think anybody doesn't know here what is an electronic gadget. I think all of you are having I think listening to this session using an electronic gadget and all. So these are the things which can be developed by an elect uh, electronics engineer. So imagine your life without electricity, without television, without refrigerators, without microwaves. Now all these things became part of our life. But who develops it? Who modifies it? And who come up with new designs are the people, engineers, are the backbone who come up with these kind of solutions. Because the main skill an engineer is having is a problem solving skill. Look at all the innovations we see today, either it's in apps, either it's in products which we see today. You see the current apps like Zomato and Swiggy, they are solving the food ordering, uh, uh, food ordering problems. So, and if you see the other apps which we have today, Uber and Ola, they are solving my travel problems. Likewise, as an electronics and uh, uh, electrical and electronics engineer, there is a huge demand for you people because it's an ever increasing demand. Today, you see there are six electronic devices in your home and uh, not even six, there might be two digit devices also. If you have four members in your family, your, your mother, your father, your brother, and you, Four people will be having four smartphones, four smart watches, and a smart TV. Some people have smart uh, refrigerators. Likewise, we are surrounded ourselves, or we are surrounded by these electronic instruments and all. So there is a huge scope, and these people play a vital role. Electrical and electronics engineers play a vital role going forward, and huge demand is there. What actually it is? Okay, I think people doesn't know, uh, I'll be dividing both. What is electrical engineering? What is electronics engineering? What you will be reading with? I will be giving you a brief about all these things. Okay, so mainly electrical, uh, electrical engineering is a core study of electricity and electronics, which is one of the most chosen streams actually. You see a lot of people usually say ECE or EEE. This is one of the uh, uh, most chosen branch or in-demand branch in engineering, okay? So what they will be dealing with uh, mostly electrical engineers, high power devices like generation of electricity, transmission of electricity or distribution of electricity. This comes to electrical engineer in engineering part, okay? What are the discoveries which we saw uh, uh, in the previous decades or in the previous centuries, which which pushed us towards the current uh, innov uh, innovation is you saw you saw the electrical engineers uh, uh, invented uh, induction motors by Nikola Tesla, electric light by Thomas Alva Edison, and radio by Mark Bunny. So these innovators transformed the way or transformed all the theoretical knowledge they have learned into practical knowledge, into practical devices. This didn't happen overnight. The innovation which we see today in uh, in uh, uh, in all these electronic gadgets, 
it didn't happen overnight it was a continuous effort i think students uh, you need to understand you should be having a continuous learning mindset so that is what electrical engineering does but what about electronics engineering electronics engineering in the sense people who work with small devices electronic devices circuits or system okay so while pursuing the students use wide range of electronic components like microcontrollers i don't know how many people know about it microprocessors programming logic devices you will get to know all these things once you join this branch what is these these things i'll be giving you a, a brief you know if you see in your laptop there is a chip what chip you are using in your laptop so maybe intel i3 or uh, or intel i5 if you are using laptop you know what that processor means in and all so these are developed by electronics engineering people so you can work on various things like and work on analog electronics analog electronics in the sense i don't know i don't know maybe a lot of you people are right now using digital meters in the bikes if you see analog electronics means you can see speed can be shown by a, a normal hand like it will be uh, when we are raising the accelerator you can see a hand moving that's analog electronics or once the digit is coming means that digital electronics it's a simple example where you can look a difference there are now we can see there are motors which can show the speed on how much speed you are going like with a hand or there are uh, there are uh, displays or on bikes now which are in digital where it can show only the number so these kind of things and power electronics embedded systems communication systems these are the things which will be working on these people call electronics engineer actually the birth of this electronics came i think in 1904 where uh, they invented a vacuum tube and all and all later uh, transistors replaced i don't know how many people understand what i mean by transistors and all what is the main difference between this electrical engineering and electronics engineering okay so uh, main thing is the two are related if you are joining a triple e group electrical and electronics engineering uh, group you will be dealing with both of them however most of the engineering ug and pc courses club together these technologies but going forward in mtech they this can diversify okay so this group is a mix of both electrical and electronics so and there can be distinguished specialization also in this regard i will be clearly telling you what's the difference between an electrical engineering and an electronics engineering first thing is what are the main functions of an electrical engineering is improving products by using electric power or developing products by using electric power this is the main function of them but the second one comes is electronics engineering what they do is they build software electronic components and for commercial use and industrial and residential use that can be done okay and the other function of an electrical engineering is they install electric goods after performing a detailed calculation manufacturing and installation were performed after detailed calculation but creating and testing and maintenance environment of electronics are a bit easy because you are not dealing with a high powered equipment and all okay testing of these equipments uh, to ensure standards and specifications and you will be inspecting these electronic goods are they working together uh, are they working properly according to the safety standards and all main thing is investigating components so this is this are the functions of electronics engineer you need to have a proper functions as an electrical engineer you need to have pro proper functions for an uh, electronic engineer you need to check it you need to design it you need to build it you need to inspect it you need to improve it if, if something is lacking so both are there but the devices you work on might be different okay so these are the main basic function but what is the main fundamental difference if if you can say see you see the uh, transmission lines which we see outside like uh, high power transmission lines they don't have processing capability that means they won't do any any thinking part but as an electronics engineer this circuits which are used have processing capability that means the circuits which you see in your smartphones the circuits which you see in your television the circuits which you see in your laptop have processing capability and the second one is function okay this circuit power machines with electricity and this is the main function of an electrical engineer but you see an electronics engineer 
there the circuits interpret an instruction or signal like when we increase press the volume of button automatically volume is increasing or when we decrease the brightness brightness is decreasing likewise if you see in the laptop we want more graphics we can do it with uh, with an instruction so this is the difference so we can do modify changes in real time here with electronics engineering it's possible okay so these are the fundamental differences which are there today for people who are who want or really interested in electrical engineering and electronics engineering okay uh, main thing is what types of electrical engineering are there you can work in energy systems you can work in power engineering you can work in systems and control you can work in instrumentation and real time computing video image and speech processing so these five are the types of works which you which you can do as an uh, el electrical engineering but what types you can work as an electronics engineering is you can work in telecommunication engineering you can work in embedded systems i don't know how many people know what is embedded system means i'll give a small example I don't know how many people saw a small circuit of a smartphone. If you have thrown your smartphone, if you would have broken, you can see the circuit inside. There are layers of circuit on one top of the other. You see on a small green board, you can see there are some lines, gold color lines, silver color lines. You can see those lines. Those are circuits designed by an electronics engineer. Those are not designs just for aesthetics they have kept. Those are circuits. And there will be layers of them. That means one circuit about the top. Because we have, if you, if you see a smartphone, it's a compact design. We can't give more circuits for that. We need to include all the circuits on top of each other in the compact space. Likewise, microelectronics, control engineering, instrumentation engineering, real estate design engineering, computer engineering. These are the types of electronics engineering which, which you can get into. Uh, you can use the Q&A uh, 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 or you can raise any questions you have uh, in the chat box. So you can see below this screen itself, the screen which you are viewing to watch this webinar, there is live chat box. If you have any doubts, you can post it there regarding anything, regarding admissions or regarding these groups. So I will be answering the, them at the end of the session. So please keep answering this. So I want to see how many of you are really interested in electronics and uh, electrical and electronics engineering. Please type one in the chat box so that I can see. So I want to see all of you. So please type one in the chat box. There is a live chat button which is available for you. So you can just press one in the chat box because I want to see how many of you are really interested in electrical and electronics engineering and all. So because all the modern appliances which we see today are designed with the combination of these both. Okay, so you will be studying both forms of all, uh, engineering all together and it's mandatory for aspiring students to learn the circuit programming of appliances only. Okay, so you will be doing both. So come, uh, you'll be getting the fundamentals from electrical engineering, you'll be getting the fundamentals from electronics engineering, you'll be combining both and you'll be coming up with a new product or a new solution for the problems we are facing. So that's why being electrical and electronics engineering is very much useful today. There is a huge scope today. Even our government took an initiative by, I think, Ministry of Heavy Industries uh, and Public Enterprises have amplified the scope because, you know, all of you know this Make in India movement, right? So they don't want to import more electronic goods, either it's a TV or either it's an electronic device like watch or any other things. So they want to make it in our country. So they want to promote more students or more graduates having knowledge in this electrical and ele electronics engineering. So that way going forward, there will be huge growth in this, uh, uh, in, in this engineering and all. So what kind of job profiles are there? If you can see, uh, all of you might be wondering, anyway, you are getting this information just to see how, uh, how what kind of job I will be getting and all. So the profiles of, of a person who completes this is, you can get into acoustic engineering, broadcast engineering, CAD technician, or you can get into control and instrumentation engineering, design engineering, electrical engineering, electronics engineering, network engineering, machine learning engineering, and nuclear engineering lot of roles. These are only some of the roles which are mentioned because I can't list out all the roles which you can which you can get into. These are some of the core roles 
four roles in the sense i know today a lot of people are getting placed in it industry even after completing this also these are the core job roles which you can get into if you complete electrical and electronics engineering and all and one more doubt you might be having where i will get placed okay so where you will be getting placed is so today there are top most recruiters are there in this segment the top most recruiters are electrical and electronics engineers including lnt constructions uh, and steel and bhcl and bhcl is a government organization sale isro and power grid corporation of india gale hindustan motors everest industry nspcl gulf lot of companies hire these people and with a very good pay okay even eleva elevators any electronic instrument uh, uh, which requires installation maintenance or designing today the all the we see lot of electronic instruments so these people hire electrical and electronics engineers okay i'll give a small example i think all of you are comfortable with elevators right like the lifts lifts or the elevators which we see in the mall and all so these are the invention of an electrical and electronics engineer because you are using power and you are converting into a machine to do some work so likewise there are a lot of applications for these people now okay so the second branch which we will be discussing is mechanical engineering i hope all of you got some insights regarding electrical and electronics so let's talk about uh, uh, mechanical engineering so i think uh, a lot of students now are worrying i saw somebody jahnavi manohar so we have told you inform you if any student today interested to talk with our counselors our counselors will be available from morning 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock so you can interact with them at that point of time and clear your doubts only 10 to 4 they will be available you can interact with them by that time but now this is the session which can, which will be closing in some half an hour and tomorrow morning if you want to talk with our counselors you can log in again and you can talk with them they will be available okay so next branch we are going to discuss about is mechanical engineering i heard a lot of doubts people using making memes or well, mechanical engineers there is no job mechanical engineers are just time passers so there won't be any girls in mechanical lot of things lot of memes about mechanical engineering are there but i can say you damn sure this is one of the evergreen branches of engineering okay it contributes several innovations today and it's one of the oldest branches also it deals with concepts of thermodynamics fluids mechanics structural analysis scope of mechan mechanical engineering is vast today because they can get work in almost all the industries that are there available today okay you can work in automobile industry you can work in uh, manufacturing units you can work in industrial machinery you can work in developing this equipment maintaining this equipment or solving this complex machinery systems and all so there is a huge scope in people who are in mechanical engineering because i will give you i'll explain you because people will be thinking only computer science is the best branch no today if you are having passion it's easy to make a name for yourself in whatever branch you want to join that is vital today i can show you the successful people in each and every engineering de department you see uh, our uh, ex president uh, late i think uh, abdul kalam ji so he, he is not a, a computer science guy but he he made a name for himself and uh, he became the president of india he is not from computer science so uh, you see lot of people are there so lot of examples i can give you see the thing is how you will grow yourself how you will make a name for yourself is entirely dependent on you do not think just because somebody said computer science is the only best group do not think it that way you can work hard and get the desired output and it's in your hands we will give you all the resources today amrita you can see all the branches we offer are exactly related or exactly required by the industries why because our curriculum is pretty much aligned with the current demands current demands of industries that's what you need to learn that's what you need to understand okay so mechanical engineering as i told you it's an evergreen branch so i think you uh, i have already told you people will be 
saying there are lack of job opportunities there are uh, no people more people are taking it and there is no requirement of mechanical nurse just false one suggestion i want to tell you if you are making a career decision like this do not follow the crowd or mob mentality i'll tell you one thing because if your friend knows swimming he will jump in the river and he will swim fine and he will cross the river if you don't know swimming will you jump in that no right because you will die that's why if you don't have knowledge about those subjects which are involved in that branch don't pursue it even though that branch is having demand because you will struggle people can suggest a lot of things but you need to complete the next four years with your efforts and with your hard work if you are not doing it properly you are the person who is going to struggle i talked with a lot of engineering students in their final years the main reason which they tell uh, uh, once they come to this final year is i'm not interested in engineering and uh, my just my parents just forced me to do this because if you are passionate about the career learn more things there are a lot of research happening in mechanical engineering there are a lot of companies coming up in this segment so you need to get an idea of what's happening what's happening in this branch and what's what what are the current innovations happening what are the current investments happening for example uh, tesla is coming to india that means there will be huge scope in electric vehicles electric vehicles means they are automobiles right so people require uh, who are the main designers of automobile mechanical engineers so likewise you should understand there is a scope for each and every branch so chemical engineers are involved in particular thing so you need to have an idea about where is the need of each branch okay so what actually it is what you do as a mechanical engineering engineer means you deal with designing you deal with manufacturing you deal with maintenance you deal with testing of machines and as i told you it's the most versatile branch where you can get where you can apply mechanics material science applied mathematics and physics okay and with the rise of modern technology you see we see lots of innovations in the automobile industry we see lot of innovation in the in the domain of robotics and automation you see lot of machines who, who are doing the packing to develop this people will need or people require help from mechanical engineers and all so this is one aspect which you need to understand what are the new trends actually what what i meant by new new trends in the sense new scope is it's no longer remains to manufacturing testing and use machinery before before people used to think mechanical engineering means you will be working in a workshop or a more industry heavy machinery and equipment and all but now it changed it went into robotics it went into new materials it went into nanotechnology it went into aided designs computer aided designs geo mechanics and all so lots of new innovations are happening in this branch which you need to understand which you need to take a note of it which can change the scope of this branch entirely okay these people might come out on top also in the coming days and robotics uh, is is one more thing that is happening in the in under this segment only because robotics you need people with uh, mechanical engineering skills electrical engineering skills computer science engineering skills okay so it's a blend robotics is a blend or it's a, it's an interdisciplinary thing you can't uh, give robotics so means only computer science no robotics is involves lot of branches and robotics will have a huge rise in the coming days so as a mechanical engineer you have a vital role to play and the second one is mechatronics okay machines using using complex engineering systems complex methodology in assisting uh, automation and all i don't know how many people watched these videos in youtube where uh, factories how they automate the food processing how they automate the packaging and all so people does this so mechatronics is um, might be a new thing to india but it's already there in other countries okay so this this is also a one new branch coming up uh coming up also okay and also for automobiles heavy duty lifting machines modern aircrafts uh, because all the levers are and all are there so whenever there is a heavy machinery work whenever there is a complex design whenever there is an innovation ha happening there you can find a mechanical engineer for sure okay so these are the things a mechanical engineer can do so what kind of job prospects you can get into first thing is you can get into designing these things 
you can get into produ uh, producing on the production of these things or you can get into analyzing and testing of these things or you can get into installation and maintenance of these things or you can get into research so these are the job prospects or job uh, prospects in industries different types of industries where you can get into so as i told you design is the main role of a mechanical engineer you will be responsible for drafting sketches either with, uh, with the help of technology or without the help of technology or with the computer aided drawing i don't know how many of you know about cad so that is the one thing which you will learn if you are really becoming a mechanical engineer and production job role means uh, it's involves consultation it's in it involves supervision of the machines and components and all and analysis and testing like you will be analyzing and testing the machine parts and the equipment and all so your responsibilities would include checking the faults rectifying it and increasing the efficiency and all and increasing the uh, maintenance or, uh, or maintaining the installation and maintenance suppose you bought a new uh, uh, machine to our industry who will come and install it who will maintain it engineers does that and research people um, a lot of exciting research is happening in this regard so these are the things where you can get into as a mechanical uh, engineering and all so what who are the top recruiting industries i can talk about this automobile industry as i told you we require vehicles to go from one place to another there won't be any person here who can say i don't want a vehicle i want to use public transport a lot of people tend to are like to earn a vehicle they want either a bike or either it's a, either a, either a car or either a, or a luxury vehicle which they, which they can afford so automobile industry won't uh, or, or what is it, won't vaporize an overnight and there will be continuous innovations happening in this automobile industry because either if you, you see i'm i just only talked about personal vehicles you see there is some hyper loops coming and you see there is some bullet trains uh, which they want to bring it to our country and a lot of these kind of things even public based transport can also can also increase increase or uh, can also uh, develop reinvent itself also so automobile industry you can you can get placed as a mechanical engineer and it's huge and look at aerospace industry as a mechanical engineer you might get placed in aerospace industry also like uh, people can work on the propulsion people can work on the thermodynamics that are involved or uh, people can work on various designing in developing this aircraft designs and rockets and all all the levers or all the things that are happening in this thing so aerospace industry also will have a huge role to play in our future it won't go away so mechanical engineers will be working in this industry and in an aerospace industry and also the next one is robotics and mechatronics which i already told you lot of people because of the pandemic your teachers adapted using technology or you are listening to this class online likewise people uh, 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 industries also trying to adapt the technology and come up with automated solution that's what robotics and mechatronics is because for packaging or for manufacturing industries they want to include less labor to develop these things and power uh, power plants metal plants so uh, all these places there will be usage uh, of uh, thermodynamics principle fluid mechanics principle material sciences principle who learns or have knowledge about all these things is mechanical engineering person so what kind of job prospects i know you might be asking where i can work with the minimum uh, work experience of 2 to 5 years you can earn pretty decent salary and the top recruiters you can see as a project uh, manager you will be Uh, planning budgeting organizing and the documenting all right i can work in uh, bhl ongc turbo gate so these are big companies where you can get, get work into and also you can work in tata motors ashok leyland godrej kirloskar so service and maintenance engineer you can see different types of engineer or if you don't want to become a designer or an engineer you can try to go for a professor or a lecture lecturer in iits or in other universities complete your a phd or complete your higher academics also that might be also a good valuable proposition for you okay so which campuses in amrita today offers uh, this branches is if you are really interested in electrical and electronics branch it's offered in amrita puri coimbatore bangalore electrical and electronics branch is offered in three branches amrita puri coimbatore and bangalore but if you are really interested in mechanical engineering in all the four campuses amrita puri coimbatore bangalore and chennai 
in all these four campuses it is available so you can look at our fee structures also i will be giving you sir what is the fee structure of electrical and electronics engineer means today if you want to study electrical and electronics in amrutpuri and bangalore the minimum fee is 1 lakh the highest fee is 2 lakh 50000 so this fees will be vary based on your merit how it will be vary is if you scored good marks in your aaa exam or je exam if you wrote aaa means our own engineering and math exam we conduct so that means you are in top 10% in that exam you achieve very good percentile very good rank so that means you are in top 10 top 10 people or top 10 percentile means you will be having only 1 lakh fee likewise the first category of fee in coimbatore is 1 lakh 25 so but highest is 4 lakhs so coimbatore will have a highest fee if you are really interested in coimbatore so this is for electrical and electronics engineer uh, engineering in amrita in this three branches it's offered this is the fee structure i can show but what about mechanical engineering mechanical engineering is offered in all the four campuses so the minimum fee you can start with in amrutpuri bangalore and chennai is 1 lakh but coimbatore the minimum fee is 1 lakh 25000 and the highest fee in all the other campuses except coimbatore is 2 lakh 50000 and coimbatore the highest fee is 4 lakh okay so this is the fee structure which you need to understand and one more thing which i want to share with you students so that if any student today attending this session first so there are some guidelines to attend phase 2 so i will tell you for those who have not applied so far you haven't applied for amrita you can attend phase 2 this phase 2 ending date is 25th july you can apply before that and for those students who have applied for phase 1 but didn't submit willingness didn't uh, do anything just they have applied in applied and waiting for phase 2 they can straight away write phase 2 no need to worry but student who have submitted willingness for phase 1 and you miss the exam again you need to pay extra 600 when this 600 fee payment for phase 2 will be activated it will be activated by 29th june so you you will be writing this or you will be uh, uh, writing phase 2 also dates also i will be confirming with you so phase 2 will be by july 29th phase 2 will be starting so this is we are we are in june now we have only one month to go for phase 2 also so we will be considering if you have written both the phases we will be considering both the scores based on that we will be giving you a rank and uh, we will be based on first first you have written phase 1 you are eagerly waiting for your results okay so we will be announcing it uh, with, within a week so we will inform you you can see your results only in your application portal i think all of you understood what are the guidelines and what you can expect as an electrical uh, and electronics engineer what are the roles you can play what kind of skills you can learn what kind of curriculum you will be learning and all and as a mechanical engineering how you are really vital today and how so you can have a diversified career if you join in mechanical engineering at all i think with this uh, i think i will end my session but i will be open to more questions today if you are having any questions please ask please put it in the chat box so that i will be keen to answer all of our uh, all of your questions we will be having a fair uh, a physical fair i don't know how many of you or uh, from uh, uh, southern part of the country how many of you are from northern part we are conducting a physical fair uh, amrita will be coming to your city i think we have selected four cities so first city will be tirchi we will be there in tirchi on this third july third so we will be informing you where we will be we will be coming physically to your place and we will be coming to chennai also the next week we will inform the dates also first we are coming to tirchi city all our counselor teams all our departments will be there you can interact with them you can get insights about all the departments placements fee structures in hand i suggest all of you to go and or all of you to come attend our physical fairs 
that are happening in your city. We will be mailing you regarding these things. Likewise, how I shared you information about each branch virtually. There, you can directly interact with the faculty. You can directly learn from them, clear your doubts regarding the department opportunities, department uh, job opportunities and skills that you'll be learning about curriculum, about scholarships, all these things you will be learning there. Okay, so please students, if you have any questions, please post it in the chat box so that I'll be answering your uh, queries now. So please make use of the chat box that is there. So if you have, if you don't have any doubts, please let me know. So you can use the live chat, uh, chat option that is available for you in the, in the, in the platform. You can just go there and uh, give, uh, ask your questions. I'll be answering them. Yes, I think uh, students uh, are not having any questions and they are pretty much clear about what needs to be done. Uh, or what kind of insights you want to have regarding this uh, phase two, regarding these branches we have discussed. Uh, yes, one UVS Raghava asked, does admission process start only after phase two result? Yes, admission process today, if you want to get a seat in Amrita. So the main thing is after completing both the phases, we will be announcing the rank. Based on that rank, admission process will be starting. Seat allotment process will be starting by uh, uh, August 8th. I think that's a tentative date. August 8th onwards, seat allotment process will be starting. So we will inform you, we will mail, mail you what is the process for that. But it's based on your merit rank, which you have achieved in a Yes, any other questions? I think Raghava asked me the question. Any other questions students have, you have two more minutes time to post your questions or queries that you're facing. And anyway, I suggest all of you to make use of our counselors that are available tomorrow morning from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They will be available online for you people. In the same platform, you can go talk with them and have an interaction with them, understand in person what queries you have, convey the, those things to them, okay? I think nobody is having uh, any questions because yesterday itself, I have cleared a lot of doubts from the students regarding phase one, when the results are coming, when the admission process was uh, coming and all. See students today, um, one student saying, Ashish Pane, last time we couldn't get Jodhpur as student despite it being among the choices while filling the application. What are the chances in phase two? That uh, we can't tell Ashish because your stu uh, students who booked it before you, you might have booked the center uh, well in hand. So once the slot booking starts, you can do it straight away so that you will be getting the desired center. So we will be giving you uh, in those the center based on the priorities which you are given, the top three priorities. Based on that, we will be give, giving you. But mostly you, you might be getting it, I think. So this time, so this time, all the students are eligible to write the exam. There is no willingness part. So whoever applied for Amrita using A Triple E, I suggest you people to apply both using A Triple E and JE because you will have an advantage. Why? Because if you wrote both the exams, we will consider the best scores and allot you rank based on those best scores. Likewise, if you are writing both A Triple E phases. Like A triple E phase one is complete. Now, if you are writing A triple E phase two also, we will be considering your best score for the ranking. Okay. So I think students, uh, no questions are there. Uh, I will uh, end this session. We will meet again. Uh, we will meet again soon, and uh, we will discuss tomorrow about our uh, uh, other branches that are that are there available today. We will, you'll be receiving a mail today also, tomorrow also. There will be a dignitary who will be addressing you uh, regarding uh, uh, 
industry in industry collaborations and all so please be part of it get to hear from our principal and dean of each campus every day because it's it will be good to learn what you will be what kind of opportunities you will get once once you join over there and it's well enough thank you for joining i'll meet you again tomorrow at from 4 pm to 5 pm so we can discuss again regarding this regarding the branches two other branches which are there and also about uh, uh, the industry collaborations thank you students and uh, we'll see you soon and uh, have a good day